This video is going to go over the definition of what a lattice is. Okay. So first of all, the definition of lattice, it is a specific type of post set. So this type of post set here will have our building set. So the actual elements that we care about are from the set L. And the partial order, the relation that we deal with is R. So first thing is, it's a type of post set. Okay. Now here's what makes it actually a lattice. If you take any two elements from your building set L, so think of them either as individual elements or as a subset of cardinality 2. If you take any of those two pairs of guys, you can always perform the operation of meet or and the operation of a join on those two elements and get back an answer. Now we haven't defined, uh, defined what a meet and a join are yet, but we're going to do that in just a second. So here's the big takeaway. Every two elements, so any two elements you pick, and specifically there are any two different elements, which is why I went ahead and wrote them out in this set form right here. Any two different elements in your post set, you will always be able to compute its meet and its join if you are in a lattice. So that's the defining feature of you have a lattice or not, is you're able to, the meet and the join exist. So what happens? If you have two elements, you compute either the meet or the join, and it doesn't exist in the post set, that's when you would not have the lattice. All right, so that was a lot about meet and joins and we haven't defined them yet. So let's go ahead and define a meet and a join. So the meet of two elements, A and B, where A and B are different elements in your post set. Symbolically, the meet looks like this. It looks like this little carrot that's pointing up between them. Um, in my head, I always think that looks like sort of a you know pointy intersection sign. So this is defined as somebody called the greatest lower bound of the two elements, A and B. Now, greatest lower bound, what does that mean? In terms of the relation, it means that if you take the meet, so symbolically A meet B, and look at the meet of A and B related to A, the meet is also going to be related to B. So lower bound means it's below A and B in your Hasse diagram. So if we drew something like a picture, maybe we'd have A over here, maybe we'd be have B over here. Your meet would be below both of them in the picture. So here would be A meet B. Okay. Now, it's not just any lower bound, because a lower bound would be somebody who you could reach from either A or B going down the Hasse diagram, but it's the greatest lower bound. So that means when you're traveling down the Hasse diagram from A and B, it's the first one you get to in common from both of them. So maybe it's something like this where you actually reach that meet from the two guys, two separate guys, and you go down exactly one level. Maybe, though, B is up a little bit and you have to go down two levels to get to the vertex in common. Okay, But the key thing here is that there's nobody that you travel that's between A and its meet or B and its meet that you could also get to from the other guy. In other words, you go down the Hasse diagram, the meet is the first vertex that you can get to from both A and B. Now, what happens if A and B are on top of each other, okay? So I'm going to do a baby example where literally B here is related to A, but maybe it's a longer chain. Maybe you have some other guy vertices between A or B. That works too, okay? Now, what happens here? If you are looking for the meet of A and B and they're different guys, but they're actually related to each other in the post set, notice what happens. When you go from A down, you'll be able to reach B and guys below B. When you're at B and you go down, you can reach anybody below B, but the first time they actually get to a vertex in common in this scenario is actually at B. So this is a situation where A meet B is in fact one of your two elements. Okay, And that happens anytime you have this situation that looks like a chain. Okay? Now, that takes care of the definition of what a meet is. This is the most common thing to see, but you see this guy a lot too. Now let's talk about what a join is. And it turns out a join is defined very, very similarly. So the official definition of a join is join of two elements, A and B, that are not the same element. What do you have? Symbolically, it looks almost the same, except now this is a little V. It points down. And here you've got the least upper bound. So up above, we have the greatest lower bound, and now we're looking at the least upper bound. 
So if you're looking at an upper bound, that means it's going to be above A and B. So if we have A and we have B in our post set, the join is going to be somewhere up here above it. Notice symbolically in the picture, both the meat and the join, the little guy that looks like either a carrot or a V, if you put an arrowhead on there, it's pointing towards where A and B actually live, if that helps. Okay. Now, what does this actually mean? This means that, one, A is related to the join and B is related to the join. Notice it's above them, so they have to be related to it. And you don't have any other element in the Hasse diagram or in the relation where A is related to that other element C and then C is related onto the join and also B is related to that same other element C and then C is related onto the join. In other words, when you travel up the Hasse diagram, so before we were traveling down the Hasse di diagram to get the meat, for the join, when you travel up the Hasse diagram to get to the join, it's the first element that you can come to in common or the first element that you reach from either A or B. And I really shouldn't say either. I should say from both of them. Here is the first one that both of these guys can get to. Okay. And that would be your join. Now notice, just like with our two examples with our meat, and let me pull it back down here so you can see the full meat, you could also have not just that these A and B are incomparable to each other, in other words, they don't have a line that connects them, you could actually have them where they're stacked. So I'll go ahead and stack them again. This is actually called a little subchain. I'll do a small one right here. So in this particular case where you've got A and B, notice if you're trying to go up, what happens? Well, B goes up to A and then everywhere else. A goes everywhere else above A. Well, the first one that they come to in common is that top guy, A, right here. So again, when you have a little baby chain involved, the join is here, the top element of the chain, where the meat was the bottom element of the chain. And that's the crash course of the definition of what a meat and a join is. When we get back together, we'll, talk, we'll actually do examples of computing meats and joins in examples.